forget about it. It's a beautiful job. And I mean, the, the quality of this, the production value, I want to tell you it's amazing. What was that film? Was that filmed where? And they actually Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was yeah. filmed there. It was filmed in uh, about five different states in Mexico uh, and in all practical locations, you know, from Durango to Alisco to Distrito uh, Federal, in Sierra de Organos, and Quetzal, and that city, which is the main Cristero city where the church is, is Quetzal, and uh, Oaxaca. We, maybe we spent three months in Mexico. Uh, and there was an extraordinary production. Uh, the entire crew, all the designers are all Mexican. Dalo Solares, Salvador Parra is a production designer. Uh, Maricela Fernandez, the costume designer, the uh, line producer, everybody was uh, Sandra Solares, they're all Mexican. The director's American, some of the cast members obviously were from international. Uh, but the entire production is financed and produced out of Mexico and it shows the quality of, of artistry that exists there. How much? How much? How much you want? How much you got? <laughs> Uh, it's my understanding that it's the largest production in Mexico up to this date. Uh, I think the budget was around $11 million. I did not produce the movie, uh, uh, but it, uh, that's around the figure. Yeah. And then what I got on the... Uh, Deal, Well, there's a gentleman here. I'm sorry. That you, yes, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I'm Mexican, and uh, this is the first time that I see this story. And, uh, so I really appreciate it. Uh, my question for you would be, uh, what moved you to participate in this project? Well, you know, uh, I found this story to be incredibly moving, and uh, and uh, I didn't know anything about the Cristero Wars, and nor did many Mexicans that I spoke to about. And I found that to be very curious, that it had been sort of, you know, brushed under the, the rug, as they say, and nobody wanted to kind of speak about it. But uh, I thought the movie had all the classical elements of great Hollywood, uh, you know, historical dramas and historical epics and I knew it would get, you know attract an international group of actors and as all those classic movies have you know in Hollywood and, and so I thought it would be a great thing to, to support and to go on that adventure you know and I was very moved by the character I was honored they would ask me to play Orosteta and it was a very easy decision you know I met with the director early on and he showed me all the uh, the uh, scouting and all the production work that was being done by Salvador Para locations and uh, a very uh, intensive book by Jean Mayer about the Cristero Wars and and it was very easy to it's a very easy decision you know well, I did it because of what you saw on the screen and and uh, what these people went through what they sacrificed and specifically the arc of this particular general was uh, uh, very challenging yes yes oh. Oh. yes yes I mean, Abdo has a personal, interesting story. Go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, want to thank you very much uh, uh, for bringing this, for you playing the part, and for, uh, I'm sure that the, the movie might not have been made if not for your participation. And uh, and just a personal acknowledgement, my, my father's uh, uncle uh, was, a, was a Cristero. Uh, and, wow. uh, and that's something that has been personal to, to our family. And so we've known about the, the struggle of, uh, of, the, of the, the church during that time and for it to be brought to life, as you did, in a really magnificent way. The cinematography, the compositions, the set pieces, the action, the, the, it, you have it there. Once you, you they put a release date on this, I'm sure you're going to see some, some, uh, some film theaters and uh, just my family alone will fill up the theater. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and mine. Associated Press. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, right, yes. Uh, this gentleman. Uh, one moment. This gentleman has been raising his hand for 20 minutes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Garcia. <laughs> thank you, man, for allowing me to speak. Uh, first of all, I wanted to congratulate you for the powerful question I said. I think it's a powerful narrative. Your role as uh, the general Guru Sieta, powerful. <laughs> that dialogue between you and Ruben Blades in the little house, powerful. Thank you. Amazing. You know, congratulations. I, I have no choice but to ask you this question. This is the battle for the faith, faith, the faithful, the people who have faith in religion and uh, such. Uh, Pope uh, Benedictus was in Cuba only three weeks ago. What is the equivalence that you see between the battles of the Christians in the 20s in Mexico and the battles for the faith in Cuba and the role of faith in the transformation society in the island? Well, I think there's, there's, there's countries and communities all over the world that are struggling for liberty these days, whether it be religious freedom, or just general freedom, absolute freedom. And as we know, Cuba has been under a, 
you know, a dictatorship for over 50 years now, who uh, initially, when he first came into power, he abolished religion. And so to me, the fact that the church is in there is obviously uh, a positive uh, note. I mean, there are, we all would like things to progress a lot quicker in Cuba than that they have, obviously, and specifically myself as a, as a Cuban exile. Uh, we're still waiting for the promises of the revolution to be delivered, which is, you know, liberty and democracy and absolute freedom. I mean, it's a very strong parallels to this movie, to what they're fighting for then, to what people around the world are fighting for now, not only in Cuba, but in other countries. So uh, the fight continues, you know, and the fight continues. And, but it's a good fight, you know, so we've got to fight it. Yeah. Okay, um, this, uh, questions. First of all, uh, how did you make to handle all these roller coasters of emotion? Did you make us like a hate, hate you and love you and everything? And on the other Sound hand, like my uh, wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and in your character. And, and on the other hand, um, how do you think is the, the importance to bring all these stories to the, um, to the audience? Well, I think it's an important story. I think, you know, we try to, you know, if, if a movie has any kind of resonance and you can help, you know, people awaken to something in, in their hearts or in their minds that for these things not to re repeat themselves in history, then maybe we've done a good thing. But uh, I think it's, it was a worthy story to tell. It's a, an important subject matter, I think, to, to explore and to keep alive uh, because these things are happening, like I said before, they're happening today in, 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 in the world. Um, uh, the character was delineated. Obviously, I have to find the Gorostieta inside of me to draw those parallels. And, uh, you know, this is serious business. This is not a, you know, to go to war for something like that and to, and to lose people, put young men into, into the arm, into the, you know, in arm's way and, and lose them for him or, uh, was, was a very, you know, something that was very painful to him and to me, obviously. So. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Andy. Yes. Uh, okay. Estoy Pepe. ¿Qué tal, Pepe? ¿Cómo estás? Hey, bien. Tremenda camisa. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. ¿Qué pasa con la raza? Que no les gustan los colores, pero... Sí, yo sé. Lleva, nada más que llevas un día en Miami ya te pusiste la camisa, ¿verdad? No, yo nací así. Ah... <laughs> oh. Increíble. ¿Qué, ¿Qué van a hacer con el, con el distribution? Y ojalá que lo que hemos hecho, what's going on right here with the blogging, yeah. uh, the blogosphere, it helps tremendously. It, it's going to be very important that, that we reach out to everybody to push this. And let's see how powerful we bloggers are. Let's see how much we can make this, get this going tonight, tomorrow, and get everybody to knowing about this yeah. film when where will it be it open it opens june 1st in america it's approximately close to 800 theaters uh the movie's being distributed by arc entertainment arc i believe right correct and uh but you know the, the money behind it are the people who make the film they're they're actually financing the pna of the film and and doing it on their own because they didn't feel they were getting the proper support from the normal channels of distribution people would, in terms of how they wanted, they wanted to move, present the movie in a much quieter way. They didn't, you know, they marginalize the potential of the story like they do most often to movies of his, well, his Hispanic content. They tend to marginalize uh, that they feel, and I've had this for the years, and you have because you've been in the industry with me. That uh, you know, if it's a movie about the Mexican Cristero Wars, only Mexican Cristeros would be interested. <laughs> You know, and that's the mentality that you confront, you know, and, and, and my argument always is, I'm not English or a patient, but I went to see the English patient, you know? <laughs> we're, we're all Cristeros. When, when well, it's a, it's a universal, it's a universal story, you know? And, and we see, we go see Schindler's List, and we show see the English patient, we see Dr. Chivago, and we see every movie from all cultures, from all stories, and this is just a universal for, uh, story about something that's going on in the world today, told in a classic uh, in a very American way, really. I mean, if you look at the genre, the, it's, it's like a John Ford film, you know, so there's nothing to marginalize here. You either make a good movie or a bad movie, as Dizzy Gillespie said, there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. We've got to stop saying, oh, it's a movie only for Hispanics or only for, you know, Poles or only, no, no, it's not. They just make a great film. People are interested in diverse stories, and I think the audiences out there these days are, are absolutely, uh, I think, tired of... Uh, 
the stuff that, are, that is being put out, you know. And the movies that we used to appreciate and grew up with, at least me in the 60s and 70s, uh, whether it be Taxi Driver or Midnight Cowboy, or all those movies would be independent movies today struggling for, for financing. They would not be as there, and they were all, in those days, studio films. So we have a great, we need to bring, we need to keep that alive. And, and, uh, and, and uh, we can only do it really with your help to get the awareness out there. That's it. It's definitely, we're always complaining about not, not having any uh, films. This is the film that we need to promote like none other. I mean, there's no, uh, th this is the time. If we don't do it now, then we can wait another five years for a film like this to come out. Yeah, it's very difficult to get them financed. It takes, as you know, movies are expensive, and and uh, if it's a good movie and it's worthy of your support, then you got to go out there and really let people know that it's a movie to be seen, really. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Over there. More questions. Okay. Uh, I was fascinated with this movie. I loved it, all the acting and that it was in Mexico. But I would really like to know how you got involved in this Hispanicized event and how are you feeling uh, being part of this? I was invited to come by the, uh, the, the event organiz organizers and through the, the people that are handling the promotion of the film. And uh, they told me about it and I said, of course I'd be there, you know. Uh, Steve Bauer. popcorn. Steve <laughs> Yeah. So, so I was told about it and I thought, you know, this is important. I mean, movies, especially movies, independent movies, really survive around the internet and, and, and the word of mouth in these days. We had a movie that I produced that came out, uh, like last year, I guess it was, uh, called City Island. And we were in the theaters 24 weeks. We were in the movie 24 weeks, and we didn't even have an ad, ad in the paper because there was no money behind it. But the word of mouth that you people, thank God, kept telling people you got to go see this movie. So sometimes distributors don't really believe in it, even though the people are believing in it. You know, and, and it's important that this is a new era, and the internet and the blogosphere can. It can it can really help a movie, and it can also you can also kill a movie overnight. You know, which we've seen that happen with a lot of huge you know studio productions that cost two hundred million dollars, and they can't even open on a Friday night because the word is out that it's no good. So hopefully, if you like it, you know the word gets out that it's something to see. You know? One more question. Hola, Andy. Soy actriz dominicana de la República Dominicana que te queremos mucho allá. Um, recently, you filmed the truth over there in the Dominican Republic. Yes. I'm also producing the story about Maria Montes, and I want to congratulate you because it's a story based in the tens and the twenties. It's not a commercial story as we all used to to go follow, and you're motivating me. Everything you're saying right now, the story we're working on with the Mexican director Sonia Fis is based in the twenties and thirties. So I was very much in love with the story, the acting, the music. I know how close you are to great music behind the story. And this is exactly as a Dominican film we're looking for. Who was in charge of the music? Uh, he's the same gentleman who wrote the music for Titanic and his Oscar award winning uh, composer. So awesome. uh, we, we have very talented people you know, associated with the film. And hopefully you know, the word will get out and people are going to want to see it. You know, I'm like, I'm very encouraged because the people who actually made the movie are, you know, putting their, their as they say, their money where their mouth is, and they're, they're making sure that the movie gets out in, 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 a, in a substantial amount of theaters with the proper uh, advertising, so people, are, there's an awareness. It's hard to get people aware of a movie if there's no money spent against it. Doesn't matter how good the movie is, uh, people got to know where it is and where it's playing. It's got to be an ad in the paper. It's got to be support on television. If not, you know, people said, oh, I've heard a lot about that movie. When is it coming out? It came out already, you know. And that's what happens. Was it a big budget? Yes, about, uh, about $11 million is what I understand. And anyone else? Yes, sir. Okay, final question. Hector? Senor Garcia, Hector Galvan. First of all, thank you. Uh, you brought back lots of memories to my grandfather who was part of this history. And uh, although he's not with me, uh, I, I have it in my heart. Um, my question to you is, what or has this gotten the support from the Catholic Church? And yes, what it has. Been, what, what has been the response? What, what have they said? Uh, the movie has been shown in the Vatican and it's and, uh, and, and in New York to the Archdiocese of New York and Los Angeles, obviously. And they're very excited about the film. They're very supportive of it and getting behind the film uh, full force, is my understanding. 
might even have a passion of the Christ effect in sorts. Oh well, you know, as we know, passion of the Christ uh, did, did very well, so yeah. and it reached a lot of people. So you can do half of that business here in Great Shape. Yeah. Okay, we are going to take one more and the final yeah. question for real. Uh, two part, real brief first part. You seem like quite a horseman on screen, and you mentioned <laughs> John Stewart. CGI. CGI? No. All CGI. No, no, no. Uh, I, was uh, uh, I was curious if you have a horse riding background. And, uh, uh, no, uh, now I do. Uh, now you do. <laughs> you learn real quick, huh? I, I've, I've ridden for several movies, and I, I had to kind of get reacquainted. I haven't ridden in a long time, but I, I trained before going to do so. And uh, tagging on the distribution question earlier, there are some evolving platforms. Uh, there's a site called tug.com where people as curators have put together screenings of films that already have distribution. Um, how interesting do you see a platform like that being as a member of talent who can theoretically get other people from the film to appear to put screenings and, and take the, you know, the, back in the old days of John Ford movies and so on, where you would have that roadshow feeling where talent is there, or there's some sort of an event to it, or, you know. Well, we do it. I mean, when you, do we distribute a movie independently, we have no money. So, and, uh, you go on the road with a movie. Yeah, I'm on the road with a movie right now. It's called, uh, you know, in this case, there is some money behind it. We're, we're lucky, but, you know, uh, there, you know, you work hard for it. But it takes more than that. You need the financial support. You can't just do it on your own, hanging out there, you know. There, you know, you can do the best you can with it, but without the financial support of, of the distributor and advertising, you know, it's just, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And great movies are... Are, are for, you know lost because not enough people see them. Eventually, they get to them on cable and on demand and all that, and they go, "When did this movie came out? This is the best movie I've seen this year." Well, there you go. So, uh, you know, this grassroots element of blogging and the internet is a very powerful medium, as we all know. And, and uh, you have a, a great audience here that, uh, for the most part, understands the movie and really grasps it. So, you're going to have support built in. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.